In just one iconic scene in A New Hope, Star Wars creator George Lucas turned sci-fi convention irrevocably on its head. Princess Leia, exasperated by Luke, Han and Chewbacca's inept attempts to rescue her, as Luke's gun, blasts open an escape route and, in a voice dripping with scorn, says someone has to save our skins. With that, the Leia was transformed from stereotypical damsel in distress to the beginning of girl power, in the words of Carrie Fisher, the inspirational woman who played her. Before A New Hope was released in 1977, it was rare to see a female lead character in a sci-fi film, let alone one as strong, vain self-sufficient as Leia. If science fiction exists to explore the relationship between humans and science and technology, press Star Wars, those humans were mostly men, think of 2001 as Space Odyssey, or Planet of the Apes, in which women barely featured. Where female roles existed at all, they were usual in characters in need of saving, or why spaces like Barbarella. Star Wars gave audiences something totally different to who's a beautiful princess, sure, but so much more. As the only leading lady sandwiched between two heroic men, her twin brother, farm boy Ernegi de Master Luke and her love interest, wisecracking pilot Han Solo, she holds her own as a witty, intelligent, resourceful woman, deeply committed to restoring freedom to her galaxy, and handy with a blaster, too. She's not an accessory. She doesn't care if her pristine white dress gets dirty in the garbage compactor. And, more often than not, she's the one telling the men what they need to do next. When we first encounter Leia, she's a member of the Imperial Senate and a spy for the Rebel Alliance, on a mission to destroy the Death Star. She's willing to make painful sacrifices to protect the Rebellion, refusing to surrender the whereabouts of its headquarters and being forced to her home planet be destroyed as a result. With her first words, she throws some intergalactic shade, telling the monster whose conversations usually end in a forced choke, Darth Vader, only you could be so bold. When Luke turns up, she utters the immortal line errant you a little short for a stormtrooper Natalie Portman as Queen Amidala a moral ruler and a capable warrior. Photograph Luke as film Cobell Rex Shutter Shock later, in Return of the Jedi, her fearless attempt to rescue Han from Jabba the Hutt results in her being imprisoned by him and forced to wear the infamous metal bikini. It's been argued that this undermined a nualized Leia, but, as Fisher pointed out, she found a way to seize back her power and emerged from the incident undiminished. A giant slug captured me and forced me to wear that outfit, and then I ED him because I did and t like it. And then I took it off. Backstage, she said, Leia's place in a major blockbuster trilogy made her one of the most significant female characters of the 20th century, inspiring new generations of sci-fi filmmakers to create far more nuanced roles for women. She blazed a trail for futuries, from Aliens Ellen Ripley and Terminator Sarah Connor to Buffy the Vampire Slayer and the Hunger Games Katniss Everdeen. Like her, they're supremely capable and self-fulfilling, but they're also relatable. They're not afraid to show their emotions, or be guided by them. In fact, emotions are often the source of their strength. Leia's example has echoed through the Star Wars universe, ensuring every major female character since has defied stereotypes. Natalie Portman's Queen Amidala in the prequels becomes a ruler as a teenager, and manages to help her people in Naboo survive the Trade Federation's invasion. She has a strong sense of morality, imploring the Senate not to use violence against the Separatists. In Attack of the Clones, she proves herself to be a capable warrior, handling a blaster with ease in the Battle of Geonosis. Initially, she also keeps the anger of her love, Anakin Skywalker, in check, teaching him the importance of democracy and peaceful resolutions to conflicts. Ultimately, though, she can't stop him from turning to the dark side. Felicity Jones as Jin Erso, more rogue than princess. Photograph Jonathan Ollie 2016 Lucasfilm Limited Trademark Sign, all rights reserved in Rogue One, the first Star Wars standalone film, Jin Nurso, played by Felicity Jones, ISNT any kind of princess, but a morally ambiguous protagonist cut from the same cloth as Han Solo the first time we meet her, she's in jail. Before accepting her destiny, to save the galaxy, she proves roguishness ISNT just for men. And then there's Daisy Ridley's Rey, who's everything female Star Wars fans have been waiting for. She begins 2015's The Force Awakens as a scavenger, living a mundane existence on a dusty planet familiar. But, just like Luke, her powers are gradually revealed and she finds herself battling the evil First Order. Strong-willed and resilient, she doesn't need rescuing, as Finn learns when she tells him I know how to run without you holding my hand she's force-sensitive, which means she can save herself by fooling a stormtrooper with an Obi-Wan-esque mind trick. She's also a skilled pilot, even winning the admiration of Han. As she prepares to fight an army of stormtroopers, he gives her a weapon, saying you might need this. 
She replies I think I can handle myself, and he answers, that's why I'm giving it to you. High praise indeed from the man every kid grew up wanting to be. Ray is such a good pilot, says Kathleen Kennedy, Lucasfilm president. That ISNT something she's turning and asking how to do, that's something she's doing. Ray, played by Daisy Ridley in Natural with the Force. Photograph Jonathan Ollie Copyright 2017 Lucasfilm Limited. All rights reserved. Ray relishes her opportunity to wield what was once the ultimate boy's toy, a lightsaber, fighting Kylo Ren with natural aplomb and refusing to give up, even when her death seems certain. Fans can't wait for The Last Jedi, which will see her training with Luke and why realizing her powers. Could she be the greatest Jedi Knight of all as Ridley has said Ray isnt important because she's a woman. She's important and she's a woman. Fisher admitted I would have liked that lightsaber moment, very much, yes, but there was no precedent. Instead, she was promoted to General Leia for The Force Awakens, it's taking a male dominatedly and putting it on a female, so it's a positive, empowering thing, she said. Her role in The Last Jedi was her last, but devastated fans can at least take comfort from witnessing the impact her legacy continues to have. The new film will feature more powerful female characters than any Star Wars film before it. There'll be more of Gwendolyn Christie's character, Phasma, described by the actor as a baddie in the best sense of the word, just in case you thought women were always good. A question mark also hangs over the motives of Vice Admiral Amalyn Holdo, a new character played by Laura Dern, who becomes a resistance leader but is distrusted by Poe Dameron. Another newcomer, Rose Tico, portrayed by Kelly Marie Tran, has the biggest new part in the movie, according to director Ryan Johnson. None of these characters could exist without Princess Leia, who proved men aren't the only ones with the power to save the world. Now, a new generation of fans are desperate to see if Rey can do the same, this time with a lightsaber in her hand. Star Wars The Last Jedi is released on the 14th of December. Click here to buy your tickets. Star Wars The Last Jedi is copyright 2017 trademark sign Lucasfilm Limited.